hopefully you can hear me all right over the sound of the tannoy in the background. Now, as you can probably see behind me, there's a castle there. Now, this is Thurston Castle up in Scotland. It's a car show. It's uh, a car show I've been intent to try and get to now for about seven or eight years. Through various things happening, the circumstances have changed, so I haven't been able to get there. But today, I finally made it here. So we're here for the BVAC, that's the BVAC Classic Car Show at Thurston Castle up in Scotland. And of course, this year's theme is not only American cars, it's the Ford Mustang, with 2024 being the 60th anniversary of the Ford Mustang. And I think there's pretty much one, if not more, examples of every single model of Ford Mustang that good old Uncle Henry produced. From the moderns, through the intermediates, through the classics. Now you certainly can't beat a Ford Mustang. Your quintessential American car. Most people, when you mention American cars, will think either Mustang or Cadillac. And obviously, if it's something like this, it has to be a Mustang to choose. <laughs> Just get a load of that for perfection. I'm going to start here with all the American cars, seeing as how I have a couple of American cars, and that's what interests me on my channel. But some of the oddities that you don't see all of the time when you've got car shows is this glorious Ford Edsel. Not a lot of these around. Absolutely slated at the time they were produced, even though they were many, many years ahead of that time. That distinctive styling at the front with the horse collar, or possibly the uh, the other description that sometimes gets bandied about. Truly wonderful cars back then in the day, as I was saying, so many years ahead of that time. Appreciated now, but slated back in the day. So much to the point that very nearly did Ford in, I believe. If I'm wrong about that, obviously, let me know in the comments. So we'll throw the camera in on the inside here and have a good look inside. Gorgeous upholstery and dashboard. I don't know if you can see in the middle of the steering wheel there, it's a push button gear selection for the automatic gearbox. But the controls in the middle of the steering wheel. And then sit in front of that is gorgeous 1973 Mustang Mach 1 convertible. You'd expect to see another Mustang here today, you know, so it's the 60th anniversary of the Mustang this year in 2024. We've got a couple of 1956 Chevys. It's gorgeous Buick and Victor. Obviously on air ride at the back. It's amazing paintwork. Gorgeous pinstriping on the back. Now, whether you can pick that metal flake up or not in the paint there. What a wonderful colour scheme. Such a long car as well. Amazing interior and dashboard. And the column shift on this one. On this one, reverses right down at the bottom of the column shift. Not at the top where you'd expect to find it on ordinary column shift orders. Of course, a very distinctive front end there as well. And then next to the Invicta, we've got a second generation Camaro. This wonderful Ford hot rod. And 
and the uh, two-door Chrysler New Yorker. Another Mustang. I'm just walking along all of the American cars that are parked up here today. From Pontiacs, Chargers, Dodge pickups, new Camaros. The Lincoln at the back there that I came down in. SSL1 pickup. I wonder if that was Richard Hammond's. Chrysler Fifth Avenue looking in amazing condition. I've got the Scottish Mustang Owners Club. All manner of Mustangs. These ones all appear to be mostly the newer version, the S550. I haven't seen any S650s yet. Well, there's that many cars here today, it's going to be absolutely impossible to fill them all of them. So what I think I'm going to do is have a, a wander around. As you'll be able to see, some of them in the background. You can see over there next to you now, we're just heading towards the uh, the Corvette Owners Club. I'm not sure which branch that is. Oh, there's a sign up. It's the Northeast Corvette Owners Club. So uh, let's have a wander around all the cars. If I turn the camera around for a couple of moments and let you see exactly how many cars there is here and how many people there are here. Absolutely amazing show. I think it's just a quick look at everything that's on display here. And then we're back to the Corvettes again. Now there's got to be easily somewhere in the region of maybe a thousand cars or more here. Now last Wednesday morning, it was a bit touch and go as to whether or not the actual show was going to go ahead at all. The organisers came down and checked the field out. And after the horrendous amount of rain we've had recently, with loads of different shows up and down the country being affected, cancelled or postponed, the were debating the possibility that they may have to cancel this one or postpone it. However, the sun came out, it dried the ground out a little bit, enough to let the cars get in. So underfoot, it's still a bit soft and squidgy in places. So if the camera bounces a little bit now and then, I'll have found something wet and splodgy that hopefully is wood, mud and water and, and not something else. But anyway, as you can see behind me there, a whole load of cars. So I'll flip the camera around We'll have some of these cars behind us, and I'll go for a walk further around. Now this is a, a mini club. It must be a Scottish mini club. By the looks of it, it's for minis and for binnies. Mini club in there, slightly modified at the front. We won't see many of them anymore. And of course, there's another one right next to it, but this is the mini club in the States. And then over there in the background, there's a little mini pickup as well. And then we're coming into uh, Classic Wheels Club from Dumfries in Scotland. All manner of weird and wonderful cars here. This is one of those shows, if there's a car out there that you like, you're probably going to find it or a couple of it here. If you spend the day wandering around, it's absolutely gigantic, this place. So I'm looking for oddities because obviously I like American cars and cars that stand out. There's a couple of Chevette ASS, HSRs back there. I remember them from the day. An Opel Cadet. Now, did they do a Cadet GTA estate? Or is that just a, a made up one to make it look better? It's a Forenza Droopsnit. A pair of Forenza Droopsnit. And of course, it was Honorable Bedford CF. Back in the day, you used to see them, and they'd always had Rover V8 put into them. Big shiny wheels, lots of murals, spoilers. That's a shame, isn't it? Fancy ruining it by identifying it as a Vauxhall Chevette. Poor Escort. A couple of nice old Vauxhall Vivas here. <laughs> now if you're sitting at home watching this and you were here on the day and I've caught you in camera or got your car on camera leave a comment below and let me know 
Oh, it's nice to know that people whose cars were on the show field are actually being watched at home by the owners of the car. And if you were here for the full day, did you have a good day? Did you enjoy it? Did you get here alright? Did you get home okay? Absolutely wonderful. So many cars. Let's look over there, behind me. Go through Triumphs. So you have convertibles up here. And then over on this side, the Jaguar Owners Club, the Jaguar Drivers Club, I should say. So the Scottish variation of the Jaguar Drivers Club. It's such a mix of cars. Mark to Escort, another mini clubman. Over here we've got Jaguars, we've got Porsches. All manner of Porsches. Is it Porsche? Porsche? There's some erotic walking around because uh, there's so much here. Absolutely lovely Rover SD1 though. What a lovely looking car. You see so few of these kicking about these days. Volkswagen Camper. All in your head at the moment. We've been up the top as well, so that's why I'm very hard. 1982 Rolls Royce. Mark 1 Ford Fiesta. Which looks as though it's seeing some modification. Definitely a fair amount of modification under there. Not to mention the fact that the front indicators are now mounted behind the bumper. If you enter Morris Miners, there's a few Morris Miners down here. Here we are, the Scottish Morris Miners Owners Club. And it looks like there's a people sneaked in there, but we'll ignore that. There's a Miner Million. I'm guessing that's in unrestored condition. And it even smells like an old car. You wouldn't believe it. You'd have to be stood here to smell this. It smells absolutely wonderful. Proper old car smell. Mixture of polish in there as well. Absolutely huge selection of Morris Minus. Low lights one as well. I've always been intrigued by these. Slightly different inside, as you can see through the glass there, than uh, the later version with the highlight one. Of course, on the Morris Minor, the original one was that design. The later one came out with the headlights lifted so they could actually sell these in the USA because the low lights didn't meet the spe safety specifications for American roads. So they were adjusted and the highlights were put on. I just noticed the Beetle there, I thought it sneaked in is actually a pickup truck conversion. <laughs> of course the lights playing havoc with the uh, colours of the car. And we find ourselves in the Rover Group cars. Miscellaneous Mini in with those. Rover 75, sorry, that's an MG estate there. Facelift 75 over there, another MG there. We we'll ignore the electric thing because they're just not real cars at all. There's just so much stuff here, so many cars here. And over there next to me is the Scottish Kick Car Club. So if you've ever fancied having a kick car, having a go at building your own car, Maybe you should consider joining the Scottish Kit Car Club if you're up in this area. 
Uh, you know, we've even got the Audi TT club here. Various variations of those. But by far the most interesting thing I've found so far is this half track up here. What a piece of machinery. Maybe it's what you need for driving on a field these days. Absolutely wonderful thing that is. Now this is an engine. This is a 1941 Packard 1650 cubic inch or 27 litre V12 supercharged engine. Now we've got that many cars here today. I think what I'm going to do is just wander around with the camera, lay some music over the top and let the cars pretty much speak for themselves. It is so many cars in so little time. Anyway, cue the music. say one top but some being it's a lotus and I mean three together anyway one of the MJs
And of course, in amongst all these MGs, you might be wondering, well, what do a lot of people do with their old MGs? Well, sometimes the only thing to do with an old MG is to cut it in half and turn it into a barbecue. Just admiring your barbecue. Oh, thank you. How many burgers does it do a minute, though? Not many. <laughs> uh, if you want them under them, or up to the temperature. What a cracking idea that is, though. Isn't it really? Did you have to do much modification to it, apart from the obvious of putting the grill in? <laughs> Half of it away. But you, oh, yeah. Did you take it away or did it rot away? Oh, no. It's an MG, for goodness sake. MGs don't rot. They just dissolve. Yeah. <laughs> That's absolutely wonderful. I do like that. And the petrol tank's done. And it's only half full. Go you. Kudos for lighting it on top of the fuel tank. Quick frying. If you want to boost the frying, yeah. you've got yeah. the petrol. <laughs> well, you see, I was thinking all you've done is you've just taken the top off the fuel tank and threw the, throw in the barbecue okay. charcoal in there. Oh, today, uh, yeah. Thanks, darling. Half full. It would light a lot easier, wouldn't it? How about that? Barbecue made from the boot of an MG. Go figure. There's that much stuff here. And of course, no matter where you wander around here, everywhere seems to lead you back to where you were previously. <laughs> I think I'm stuck in the middle of all the cars. I'm going to take a shortcut through so I can find something else to have a look at. Now, with the exception of the larder, this is the Mercedes club stand. Of course, a smart car made by Mercedes as well. Lovely selection of Mercedes here. Now, is a selection a collection of is that a collection of Mercedes or is it Mercedes? I. What are your thoughts on that in the comments below? Some lovely cars here. And a queue for burgers. Do like that. Hopefully one of these days my surf will sit that high. So heading into territory that I actually do know something about. No. Walk to Lotus Cortina. Yeah. Looking glorious in the sunshine. And also a Mark II Lotus Convertible. Gorgeous interior. What a wonderful thing. But the vehicle that's really attracted my attention is this amazing Chevy pickup. What a beautiful looking truck. Modern headlights are obviously a requirement for seeing where you're going these days and things of this age. Right, exactly. How the field from having my charger. What an absolutely gorgeous truck though. Now admittedly, I don't know an awful lot about Ferraris, but this one looks absolutely gorgeous. Tan leather interior. What a lovely looking car. Now, if you know what model Ferrari that is, feel free to post it in the comments. Because I have no idea what that one is. And then there's this wonderful 1970 Citroen D Super. Back when Citroens were Citroens and the quirkiness that they were known for is what got them through. And of course, the rival to the Ford Cortina of its time, the Ford Corsair. Now, you certainly don't see a lot of these these days. I think there's a couple up in the area where I live, or down where I live from here. But you certainly don't see a lot of them these days. And this one actually has the V4 as well. Definitely don't see, yeah. Uh, 
many V4 powered Corsairs anymore. God, there's just so many cars here. Absolutely unbelievable. Nice old Volvo parked above here as well. Now, of course, if you're from my neck of the woods, you may recognise this lovely Vauxhall Victor. Gentleman that owns it has owned it for many, many years, and it does all the local shows back home where I am. It's nice to see it this far up north for a change. And of course, it's always nice to see a Capri 3 litre X pack. Complete with wide arches as well. There's a selection of fine old automobiles. Some lovely old cars parked up here. You know, the truly is something for everybody here. And as if you haven't seen it all, I've just found, would you believe, a small collection of London taxis. There's actually a car club for the London Vintage Taxis. I really hope you can hear me over the top of the guy with the microphone in the background. But look at this. Proper old school London taxis. I bet these could tell a few stories if they had a mouth. Absolutely fantastic to see. I found a parade of uh, Nissan figures as well. But over there is a selection of Land Rover Defenders and a Volkswagen Camper Bar as well. And I want to say they've got everything here. There's even buses. Admittedly, only a small selection, but there is some vintage buses here. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you found it entertaining, don't forget to press the like button on the way out. Hit subscribe to the channel. It's free, no obligation, and I just get a reminder of all the videos that I put out when I put new videos out. But in the meantime, I'm going to go for a cup of coffee. Thanks for watching this one. See you in the next one. Bye for now.